Buenos dias! How is everybody doing today? I am very happy to be talking to you all again. Do you know that the last time we did this, it was a dark and dreary day? And today, gracias a Dios, it is a bright day, the sun is shining, and we are getting the opportunity to talk today. And I see two people chiming in who I'm so happy to see. Um, the folks at the Fairview Public Library, which is one of the first libraries where I did an event. So it's just wonderful to actually get to be able to connect with you again. And I see, oh, I think I see my nieces there. I wonder if Gia and Charlie are watching from home. So it's wonderful to be here talking with you all today. So today we are going to talk about one man who I'm going to tell you about soon. Pero primero, quiero presentarme. I want to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. So my name is Emma Otegi. I am a children's author. I write books for kids about what it's like to grow up Latina in the United States. And I write books for kids about Latin American history and literature. So I'm going to share some of my books with you that you maybe have read, but maybe aren't familiar with and you want to go check out. So this is the book we're going to be talking about today. This is Martí's Song for Freedom. It's a biography of this guy right here who we're going to be talking about. Es un libro bilingüe eh, en inglés, Martí's Song for Freedom. And in Spanish, Martí y sus versos por la libertad. And, oh, I see Gia. Hey, Gia. And here we have Pope Francis. This is a book about the first pope from Latin America. And it is also available in Espanol y en Inglés. And then this book, Silver Meadow Summer, is about a girl named Carolina. You can see Carolina right here. And one thing that's special about Carolina is that she and her family move from Puerto Rico to New York State. And one day, Carolina and her friends discover this abandoned cottage in the woods. You can see it right here. That's a reflection of it. And this is a book about what happens to her when she finds that place. So I also have some very exciting news related to Silver Meadow Summer. This is very, very exciting. I'm gonna actually put a um, picture of the cover on, uh, on the screen so you can, see. let's see, where did it go? Oh, we're not seeing it. There we go, okay. Now you should be able to see it. So you guys are all seeing the cover of Silver Meadow Summer. So I'm telling you this because something very exciting related to Silver Meadow Summer is happening. And I need you all to do a drum roll with you. Um, so can you all, are you ready? Um, let's clap on the table and we're gonna do a drum roll, ready? So the big news is that next month, Silver Meadow Summer will be out in paperback. And when you write a book, it takes a very, very long time. It took me years to write Silver Meadow Summer. And so I think that it should cost like $1,000 a copy. That's like the amount I think would be like a good amount. But, you know, my publisher disagrees with me. So Silver Meadow Summer right now is $17. But in May, so a month from now, they are going to publish Silver Meadow Summer in paperback. So you're gonna be able to get it for $7, which I think, because it took me so long to write, is a steal. So um, I put the link for where you can order it in paperback on in my bio in Instagram. So if you go to my bio, you can find where to order it in paperback. So that's what's happening with my books. And I also have another book that I talked to you about last week, if you were watching last week, coming out called The Unicorn Rescue Society, the Madre de Aguas of Cuba, which is about a monster, a mythological monster creature that lives in Cuba. And that book is part of a series um, that my friend Adam Gidwitz writes. If you haven't checked out the other books in the series, I really encourage you to do so. Y ahora vamos a hablar de José Martí. That is the topic of the Instagram Live today. We're going to talk about José Martí. So, José Martí... It was. It's five facts about Jose Martí. So let's think. What are the five facts we're going to talk about? I just want to show you him right here. So fact number one about Jose Martí is that Jose Martí lived very recently. Does he look like he lived very recently? 
No, okay, so that was a lie. The fact is not that Jose Marti lived very recently. The fact number one is that Jose Marti lived over a century ago. So he lived over a hundred years ago, which is a very, very long time. At the time of Jose Marti's life, people still got around New York City on horses. Um, I'm actually gonna show you some pictures of what New York City looked like when Jose Marti lived. You all see that? So that's how long ago Jose Marti lived. He lived a very, very long time ago. That is fact number one. But he's still very important because even people who lived a long time ago can be very important. So one reason that Jose Marti is very important, and this is fact number two about him, is that Jose Marti lived both in Cuba, which is a country in Latin America, and in the United States. So Jose Marti for me is very important because he's like many of us who live in more than one country at one time. So, or, or at different times. So I know that my parents are immigrants. They grew up in Cuba and then they moved to the United States when they are older. I know when I visit schools, which I can't do right now because all of your schools are closed, which makes me so sad. I meet lots of kids who themselves maybe spent the first seven years of their life in one country and then moved to another. Así que José Martí es así. Es alguien que se mudó. One moment, one, uh, for part of his life he lived in Cuba, and then for the rest of his life, he lived in the United States. So, um, does anybody think they know why Jose Marti um, moved from one country to another? If you have a guess, you can write it into the comments, but I'm gonna tell you. Jose Marti was somebody who was an advocate and a rabble rouser and a little bit of a troublemaker. So you know how, um, maybe there's that one kid in your school who is just like really passionate and is always saying what they think, even if you like know it's going to get them in trouble. Well, that was, that was Jose Marti. And so when he was very young, uh, really when he was a teenager, he started advocating for Cuba to become independent from a Spanish king who controlled everything that Cuba did. And because of that, he made the Spanish people so angry from all of the rabble rousing and complaining and protesting he was doing. You can see here him with his friends protesting in the square that they actually sent him to prison. So that's Jose Marti in prison when he was a young man. And after he um, was in prison, he finally was able to leave prison and he was freed. And where did he end up? Well, first he traveled all over Latin America. He lived in Mexico. He lived in Guatemala. Y por fin, ¿dónde terminó? Where did he end up? He ended up in New York City. And I'm from New York City, so this is, hi, Nancy. And maybe Nancy's kids are watching too, so I'm so happy to see them because they are some of the first kids who came to my presentations. Um, so it's very nice to see you here now. So um, Jose Martí is somebody who's very important to me because... He lived in Cuba and he lived in New York City and I live in New York City. I want to make sure you all know where Cuba is before I get to the next fact. So I'm going to put a map on the screen. So if you see this map, I talked about this last week if you were here, you see that there is um, Florida. That's that thing happening, hanging right down there. Has anybody ever been to Florida? I know my nieces who are watching actually have family in Miami, Florida, which is right at the tippy bottom of Florida. I know sometimes people have been to Florida because they've been to amusement parks in Florida or they've visited family there. Well, if you have ever been to Florida, you have been, Jessica has been to Florida. You have been very, very close to Cuba. It's very nearby. It's only 90 miles. 90 miles is not a lot. You could easily drive 90 miles if there weren't water in between. Cuba is an island. Or um, you used to be able a long time ago to take a ferry between Florida and Cuba. So it's not that big of a distance. It's very nearby. So if you're looking at the map and you see Florida, Cuba is that big, long island that kind of arches almost like a very flat rainbow from Florida over to Haiti. 
So Cuba is right there on your screen. You know where it is now. And I also want you to use your imagination to imagine what it looks like. Now, if you are like Gia, who has been in Florida, you are very able to imagine Cuba. Because like South Florida, Cuba has big palm trees that are very tall and gray and majestic. Cuba has a lot of sun. Um, it's this, it is always sunny. We don't have dark, dreary days there like we do here. Um, so it is a place that is beautiful and lush and green and that many, many people have loved. I know my parents loved living in Cuba because it was such a wonderful, warm environment to live in. I know that Jose Martí, who, remember, he was sent away from Cuba when he was only a teenager, but all his life he loved Cuba. Um, so it's a place that maybe you can imagine in your heads a little bit. And so I told you that Jose Martí got sent away, but this is fact number three about him, is that Jose Martí was an independence leader. That is the reason he was forced to leave Cuba and travel all around and end up in New York City. And what does it mean to be an independence leader? So let's think about the word independence. So if you are a kid and your teacher tells you to work independently for a while, which I'm guessing is happening a lot now, right? Because probably maybe you're having a Zoom or a Google Meet classroom meeting in the morning and then, you know, in the, um, the rest of the day, the teacher says, work independently. So what does that mean when the teacher says to work independently? Typically, it means um, you're going to work by yourself on your own. And um, so we know that independence has something to do with doing things alone. So what does it mean for a country to be independent? I'll tell you. When a country is independent, that country can make its own laws. So if you live in the United States and you have the right to vote, you are a citizen, you have a representative in the US Congress, in the you have two US senators, you have a state assembly person, you have a state senator, you have a city councilman, you have a lot of people who you can write to and you can call and who you vote for, who help make the laws on your behalf. When the United States makes a law, it's just the people from the United States making that law. Nobody in another country can come in and say, the US, you have to make this law. Well, when Jose Martí lived over a hundred years ago, that was not how it worked. Instead, there was a king, a real king, you know, real crown. Oh, I should have brought a crown today. That would have been great. Anyway, there was a king. And that king lived all the way on the other side of an ocean. And not a little ocean, a big ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. This is a big, rocky, long distance between Cuba, where Jose Martí lived, and Spain, where the king lived. And that king made all the laws for the Cuban people. The Cuban people didn't get to um, make their own laws. And that was a problem. First of all, do you like it when other people, you know, when you have rules and you don't get to help make them? Like I know sometimes I feel like when I go into classrooms and the kids have helped make the classroom rules, usually you feel a little better about the rules than if the teacher just said, these are the rules for the classroom, live with it. You know, that's not as nice. So. It was a big problem that Cuba didn't have its independence because it's very hard not to have a say in your own laws, but it was an even bigger problem because there were a lot of things going wrong in Cuba when Jose Martí lived, and he couldn't do anything to fix them because he couldn't vote. So, for example, um, you know, one of the big issues in Cuba when Jose Martí was a kid is that you see here, this is a picture, an illustration of how sugarcane was grown in Cuba when Jose Martí was a kid. And you'll see that the sugar was grown by enslaved African people, and it was backbreaking work. The enslaved people were living in tremendously violent conditions. And the Spanish weren't about to do anything about that. Why? Because sugar, when Jose Martí lived, 
was very, very valuable. It was like liquid gold. That's how valuable sugar was when Jose Martí lived. And so if you could get enslaved people to grow it in these horrible, violent conditions, you made a lot of money. So there were a lot of people making a lot of money from the sugar industry in Cuba, but all of these other people were living in terrible, violent, a terrible, violent environment as a result. And that really bothered Jose Martí, and it really bothered a lot of people in Cuba. But again, they didn't have their independence. They didn't have a way to make their world change. And that's where Jose Martí came, came in. So all of that rabble rousing I talked about when he was sent away from Cuba because he was making a big fuss, that's what Jose Martí was talking about. He was talking about how Cuba needed its independence. He was talking about how Cuba needed to end slavery. He was talking about how Cubans needed to have a right and a voice in making their, their, um, their own laws, in being independent. So that's how Jose Martí got exiled. Exiled means you're forced away. And exile is like, you know, if you were, somebody were to just like kick you out onto the street and put you in a boat and send you to another country, that's what it means to be in exile. That's how Jose Martí ended up being exiled because the Spanish were like, you are not staying here with your big ideas, telling everybody that they need to become independent and causing problems for us. You're leaving. That's what the Spanish said. So Jose Martí was sent away. And where does he end up? He ends up in my hometown of New York City. Remember, it was New York City a long time ago when there were horses and buggies in New York City. And that's the story of Jose Martí. So some sad things. Jose Martí died. He died in a battle for Cuba's independence, which he wanted to happen. I mean, he didn't want Cuba to have to become independent violently, but he wanted Cuba to become independently. So that's him right before he dies. And um, he, he, Cuba did become independent. Um, Jose Martí helped, kept fighting for Cuba's independence his whole life. Um, you can see after he died, Cuba does become eventually independent. But um, I wanted to tell you some other fun facts because it's supposed to be five facts. So we did three. That Jose Martí lived a long time ago. That he lived in both Cuba and the United States. That he was an independence leader. And I'm going to tell you a fun fact now. This is, number four is going to be a fun one. And number four is an important one because um, usually I say that I only tell kids this when I visit their schools in person. This is a secret fun fact. And right now, I can't visit schools in person. So if you are watching today, if you are one of the kids who are watching today, you're actually getting like a secret piece of information that I really usually only share in person. And here is what it is. There is a legend. I have never actually seen this verified in a book, which is one of the reasons I'm like a little bit like, ooh, should I tell people about this? Should I not? But I've heard it from a lot of people and I've heard it in Cuba and I've heard it from many, many Cuban storytellers and scholars. So I like to share it, which is that. Do you see this flower right here? Let me see. You all see that flower? Let me know if you can see that flower. So that flower right there is called the mariposa flower. And the mariposa flower is a the national flower of Cuba. And it's called that because it, it, it kind of looks like, I guess to some people, it kind of looks like a butterfly, mariposa, it's butterfly. So this is the mariposa flower right here. And you see how it's kind of like deep in the center? Jose Martí and other people in the independence fight for Cuba, other people who wanted to make Cuba independent, they needed a way of communicating with each other, but they didn't want the Spanish soldiers who were occupying Cuba to force Cuba to follow the king's rules to know what they were doing. Because of course, if they had a plan to help Cuba become independent and the Spanish soldiers found out about it, plan is busted. So how did they communicate to each other secretly? So you have to imagine, you're in Havana, Cuba. Havana is the capital city of Cuba. And you're in a crowded square and there are soldiers lining the whole square. What do you do? How do you get information to each other? You can't just have a conversation. Well, people were very smart. So the Mambis, who were the Cuban independence fighters, they would write notes to each other and roll them up very tightly 
and put those notes in the center of the flower. And then, even if they were in a crowded square, or una plaza llena de soldados, there could be soldiers everywhere, they could hand each other that flower, and, um, and the soldiers would just think, oh, those people are exchanging flowers, how nice. And they wouldn't know that there was a secret note inside. So, that's something you can always do if you ever want to um, have a conversation that your parents can't participate in. You could always um, write a note, roll it up tight, put it inside a flower, and give it to your sibling, and your parents wouldn't know what you were writing about. So this is how the Spanish communicated with each other, or the, I'm so sorry, the Mambis, the Cubans communicated with each other. One of the ways that legend has it, they communicated with each other. And number five, fifth fact about Jose Marti for the day. Jose Marti was a poet. So Joanne says that that's a good story. I really like that story. So the fifth fact about Jose Marti is that Jose Marti was a poet. And if you are not familiar with Jose Marti's poetry, I am making a promise to you. Que te va a encantar. You will love Jose Marti's poetry. If you're not familiar with it yet, you have to promise me that you are gonna go out and you are gonna learn some of Jose Marti's poetry. The best way to do that is to get this book, Marti's Song for Freedom, and when you do that, you will see that there, there's bits of poetry in this book about Jose Marti, and you'll see that Jose Marti's poetry um, is just lovely. It's simple and it's musical. It almost sounds like music. It's actually been set to music. If you listen to the song, Guantanamera, you'll find that it uses Jose Marti's poetry as part of the lyrics. And I want to share one of his poems with you today, if you're not familiar with it yet. So I want to point out where they are in the book. If you have the book at home, you can check this out. Or if you don't have the book, um, again, I put all the links to order this in my bio on Instagram. So you should definitely make sure you get the book and check it out. But I just want to show you so you know where they are later on. At the bottom of each page, if you see that there are parts of the text that are in italics, most of the text is just in regular Roman. Roman is what we call the regular type, and italics is the more kind of curvy type at the bottom. All of the stuff you see in italics is Jose Marti's own writing and his own poetry. And right now, I'm going to teach you one of his poems. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to share it first in Spanish, porque Jose Marti escribió en español. I want you to know that he wrote this poetry in New York City, so or in, in New York State, actually. So, aunque, you know, he lived in Cuba, he wrote in Spanish, but he did that writing in Spanish in New York, in the United States, like many, many people today do. And I'm going to share the poem with you in Spanish. And if you don't speak Spanish, what you can do is you can just close your eyes and you can imagine that the words are kind of falling over you like water. And then I'll share it again in English. So here we are. Let's see. Can everybody see that on their screen? Yes, I think so. So this is Jose Marti's Verso Sencillo, Simple Verses. That's the name of the book of poetry in which this poem was published. And he says, Yo soy un hombre sincero, de donde crece la palma, y antes de morir me quiero echar mis versos del alma. I, yo soy un hombre sincero, de donde crece la palma, y antes de morir me quiero echar mis versos del alma. I am an honest man from the land where the palm trees grow. And before I die, I'd like to sing the song of my soul. Aren't those words lovely? And what I want you to do if you are, um, if you're a kid and you're watching right now, I want you to think about how you would say this poem in your own words. So for example, when he says, I am an honest man, what would you say? What ad he, Jose Mati describes himself as honest. That's the adjective he chose. But if you had to choose a word to describe yourself, what would it be? Would you say, I am a kind kid, or I am a funny girl, or whatever words you want to use to describe yourself, how would you say those in your own words? And then he says, from the land where the palm trees grow. Well, how would you, um, how would you describe where you're from if you're a kid? So. I always say for this, what I have to think about, if I had to say from the land where the palm trees grow, 
I'm from New York City and uh, my father always used to like to point out to me when we were walking around New York City all of the water towers. If you've ever been in New York City and you look up, you can't see them if you don't look up. But if you ever come to New York City, which I hope someday that so much of this bad stuff we're going through will be over and you will be able to come to New York City and you look up, you will see these tanks with these little funny cone-shaped hats on top. And those tanks are full of water. They're called water towers or water tanks. And so I might say from the land where the water tanks stand on top of buildings, I might make a line of poetry from that. And then before I die, you could also think before I go to middle school, before the school year ends, I'd like, and Jose Martí says, I'd like to sing the song of my soul. Maybe you think I'd like to, um, gosh, I know for me, I'm thinking like, I'd like to see some more kids again. I'd like to, maybe you're thinking I'd like to see my teacher again um, before the, before next year or before I go to middle school. Whatever it is that you're thinking or feeling, it's a really good idea to think about this poem and to think about how you would turn it into your own word. So you can take a minute now to just think about that. Like if you had to say this in your words, what would it be? Okay, so those are the five facts for today about Jose Martí. Jose Martí lived a very long time ago, over a century. He lived in both Cuba and the United States. He was an independence leader, which meant he helped Cuba become free. He and his friends communicated secretly via the mariposa flower of Cuba. And Jose Martí was a poet who wrote beautiful poetry en español from the United States. And I encourage you, si hablas español, to write your own poetry en español. That is a great thing to do. And even if you don't speak Spanish, to think about Jose Martí's poetry and how you can apply it in English to your own life. So this is Martí's Song for Freedom that I have been sharing with you today. If you would like to get a copy of Martí's Song for Freedom, there is a link to bookshop.org in my Instagram bio. Um, bookshop.org is great because when you buy from them, the... Um, you, the sale, the money from the sale goes to independent bookstores. So right now I know a lot of us are worried because local businesses can't open their storefronts. You can't just walk up, you know, pull up to the parking lot, go to the sidewalk, walk into the store and buy a book. And so that's pretty bad for the bookstores. The nice thing about bookshop.org is that if you buy from them, that money from buying that book will go to the bookstore. So I have a link to bookshop.org in my bio. And if you go there, you can order your own copy of Martí's Song for Freedom. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. This has been a lot of fun. Y nos vemos pronto. Adiós.